All right, it's finally here. The video you've all been waiting for. The a7 III or the a7 IV? If this is your first time here, my name's Iz, and I'm a freelance fashion photographer and videographer. Now I've been using the a7 IV for almost four months since its release. And in these past four months, I've really had the time to put the a7 IV through some real world scenarios. I've had the chance to work with modeling agencies to do professional fashion portfolio updates. And I've also had the chance to work with commercial clients to shoot fashion and product content. So in terms of fashion, I've really been able to test this camera in a variety of different scenarios. Apart from editorial and ecom studio, which I will do a dedicated video on in the near future, stay tuned for that. But a lot of my viewers who watch my channel and follow my work on Instagram are keen location shooters, just like myself, who want to see the differences between both cameras in the great outdoors. And to do this test, I worked with two lovely creatives today. The first one is Mel, who is today's model and we will be updating her portfolio with some urban street style fashion photography. And the second creative is my good friend Chris, who's going to show how the a7 III can still compete creatively against the a7 IV. So for this shoot, my a7 IV is rigged up to a cage, a field monitor and a wireless receiver, so I can capture the EVF so you can see what I see when I'm shooting. Now one of the reasons modeling agencies reach out to me for portfolio updates is because I love to get my models outside of their comfort zone with both colorful styling and really creative ways of posing in iconic environments. And when we asked Mel to find some red styling is because I wanted her outfit to complement the environment using color theory. To learn more about color theory, you can check out my last video. Now I usually have about one hour per model to do portfolio updates and in the first 30 minutes I just really like to warm up the model with some natural lifestyle portraits. And for this part of the shoot my favourite lens is the Sigma 35 1.4 which I love to use for capturing natural portraits especially with that creamy bokeh. The shots tend to be a little bit more authentic and intimate and it just really means I can get a bit closer to really appreciating the details that come out of this lens. And as I was shooting this segment, I noticed the first difference between the a7 III and the a7 IV. But before I tell you the differences, why don't we do a quick test to see if you can really tell which is the a7 IV image and which is the a7 III image yourself. Check it out. Okay, so did you figure out which images were the a7 III and which were the a7 IV? Do you really think there's any differences at all? Well, there's definitely some differences and the first one for me was the increased resolution. I don't know about you guys, but I can immediately tell which image has much more detail in the portrait and thanks to the increase in resolution, there's just so much more depth in the face to see. I also really love the highlight roll off on the a7 IV. To me, it just looks more appealing on the a7 IV and the shadows look much cleaner with not as much noise. So at least when it comes to the close-ups of the portraits, the a7 IV just captures my attention before the a7 III does. I think it's harder to tell the difference between both cameras, especially when it comes to doing wider shots. But it's still nice to know that even when you do the wider shots, you can have the confidence to really punch in on the a7 IV and crop without losing as much detail with all that extra resolution. I also mentioned in my last video that the a7 IV does a great job of auto white balance. And when it comes to skin tones, it just feels more accurate and true to life. And that's not really surprising as Sony's had almost three to four years to make that new hardware much better. And I feel like it's finally competitive with the likes of Canon and Fuji 
which are iconic camera brands for their color science. But one of the reasons I absolutely still love my a7 III is for a feature that the a7 IV just doesn't have. And that is 10 frames per second. And when I say 10 frames per second, I mean 10 frames per second uncompressed raw. And this is one of the trade-offs in the a7 IV. Even though the new processor is very powerful, unfortunately it's not powerful enough to handle 10 frames per second at the new resolution of 33 megapixels uncompressed raw. I had a really interesting comment on my previous video as to why 10 frames per second isn't necessary, especially when it comes to shooting fashion, and I would say that all depends on your creative concept. With video becoming more in demand not only for creativity, but for engagement, there's more incentive now to transform your photos into videos creatively. And that leads me to introducing you our second creative today, Chris, who did exactly that. Using the a7 III, Chris created a short video that can be used for Instagram Reels or TikTok. And he did this by taking advantage of the uncompressed 10 frames per second on the a7 III to make a creative fashion gift style video. And in my industry, these kind of videos are really popular, especially when it comes to streetwear, where you can be very experimental with your content. Now this can also be done on the a7 IV. The only drawback is that you have to set your shooting mode to compressed RAW. This effectively lowers your file size and the detail in the image. But if you're doing wide shots, like we were talking about before, you can kind of get away with it and it's not as noticeable. However, when it comes to portraits, I would always recommend using compressed RAW, just so you can always retain the maximum amount of detail in your model's skin tones and texture. So these were the main differences that made a big difference to my field of work in fashion. I still think the a7 III is an incredible camera, especially for the value as many websites or even secondhand prices are very attractive right now for this camera. And the a7 III served me very well for both commercial and professional use. But as technology advances, so did the expectations of my industry and clients. So to really keep up with the talent, I felt like I really had to upgrade to the a7 IV. But for anyone who is still very new to the field of photography or even videography, I think the a7 III is the perfect gateway into the world of mirrorless technology. So in the next video, I want to bring it back to talking about some video features of the a7 IV, especially when it comes to low light. And in that video, I had a chance to film some really cool content for a commercial client using some really creative lighting setups. So be sure to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so you don't miss that video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.